two sold out shows at the Orpheum. How does that feel? I, I mean, if, it really feels great because, uh, you know, as you know, like, and thanks for watching the the stuff since the man's what meant, but it, like the whole thing was built online. But when you can bring people together, you know, especially these days when you can get people offline and like together in the mm -hmm. same room, kind of laughing at the same thing, focused on the same thing and having fun. Uh, I really like doing that. You know, I think like people meet each other there and it's just a good good way to like bring like my people together in one place when we're in such like a virtual disconnected world, you know, that's kind of like the higher end of it. And then the lower end is I just really like it when people laugh at my jokes, you know, <laughs> of course. <clears throat> well, so should fans anticipate some new material? Yeah, it's a completely new show. Um, I was there two years ago, I believe. And that was a blast, but yeah, this is a, a whole new uh, whole new hour, and my buddy Adam Gruel, he is going to come back with me, uh, so I collaborate with him. He's from the band Horseshoes and Hand Grenades, a yeah. uh, great Wisconsin band, so my other buddy Josh Burstein will be there too, so it'll be fun. Well, my wife and I saw Ronnie Chang at the Orpheum uh, not too long ago, and he he said that Madison and Minneapolis are two places that comedians love to play. Why do you think Madison is such an inviting place for a comedian to perform? You know, that's that's very true. Um, and I don't know the answer like off the top of my head, but I, I know that the um, so many comedians say that. And I, I, you know, I think honestly, it's just the, the you've got like the university there. You got a lot of um, uh, surrounding areas like different kind of um viewpoints i guess but it all sort of comes together in this one place and sort of whatever you're looking for comedically you can find an audience for that in the madison area or the surrounding madison yeah. area but the the general like the vibe of madison is just great you know i mean i went to i'm, I'm a badger <laughs> so you know i mean i I can't say enough good things about um, Madison. I love it. But yeah, for whatever reason, the energy uh, that city brings to comedy, I don't know. I, 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 I'm, I'm stuck on, on it too, but it's just, it's just, a, it really is a great, great audience. You know, I've, I've watched you kind of uh, progress as a comedian over the years, you know, from some of the smaller shows and to, uh, you know, your special that you put out last year, um, so what has that been like for you personally, like your approach to comedy, the way that you're crafting your performance? Uh, what what has that been like creatively for you? It's 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 always like I think when I was first starting off, I was doing just the man to walk minute, um, which is uh, something that actually came from a stand up bit of mine. But that stand up was like a 12 minute set, you know, or an eight minute set. So and then that takes off. And then because I can um, sell tickets, I am um, I'm right away doing like sort of a stand up tour. And so it's hard for a new comedian to jump right into a tour. So there was a lot sure. of using the, the slideshows and all that. But as sort of I've gotten the opportunity to stay on stage and to keep developing it as a stand up there, I've kind of expanded out into more of just straight stand up. And uh, really trying to dig into the art of that, which is super fun. And it's a um, it's a constantly evolving game because it's just continuing to be like observe what's going on in the world, in the Midwest and uh, what's going on with me as a dude in my 30s, you know, and how how this world's changing, how I'm changing, mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff. So you just got to kind of stay somewhat reflective but as much as you can just be in the moment of life because that's where the best that's where the best stuff happens yeah. you know so when i watch stand up every once in a while you'll hear you'll hear a comedian go okay well maybe that didn't land as well as i thought it would or oh you know that one's not going to make the special or you know yeah. you can tell like when they're trying something out is that something that's you know, in the forefront of your mind when you're trying to perform, are you even considering stuff like that? What's working? Are you gauging, you know, what jokes are landing, the timing and all that, what the audience is picking up on and using that to 
you know, to refine your shows for later. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, every single show um, up to the special, I think, um, you're trying new material. And not just because, uh, you know, you need new bits for the special, but new material, first of all, gives you as a performer a little bit of a different energy, or at mm -hmm. least me. I shouldn't speak for anyone else because I really don't know. But I like to throw new material in every show because it gives me this energy of like being on, mm -hmm. you know, as a, as opposed to like, oh, I know this. So I, I like that like added thing. And then I, I just feel like sometimes when you throw a new joke or a new bit in, it kicks around just the whole set just a little bit where you might find something else and you might find a different cadence or a different energy. In other words, I think like throwing new stuff into an hour, even if that hour is working, it, it keeps you in the moment more of the show um, as opposed to on autopilot. Yeah, that makes sense a lot. You'll hear some comedians. I listen to a lot of like comedy podcasts and you know, the, the legends will say, well, I'll do one for me and one for you. So like, I'll do one for me. Maybe it's something new, you know, and they're trying yeah. something out and it's like, they've got that, they've got those, uh, uh, you know, an arsenal of jokes at their disposal that they can rifle off at any moment. But they always like to do those new, because that's a jolt for them. It's like, it's new and it's exciting and you've got to be on. So that's interesting to hear your perspective on that. So how often are you at, when are we going to see on Netflix? Huh. Um... <laughs> At, I hope I hope at some point, uh, you know, it's one of them things where you, you're hard. kind of always it's really hard. Yeah, oh yeah, it's a tough, it's a tough thing, and it might work out. But there, there's also kind of a thing of where it's good to own your own stuff, um, and so there's there's that dynamic of trying to figure out when is a good time to shoot your own and own that and when is there a good time because a lot of times getting on netflix it's more of um you know it's kind of like a thing that you want to do it's going to give your career that boost it's going to be more eyeballs than what your own channel does mm -hmm. and so that is obviously a good thing and would be great but it's not like the end all be all and i just feel like working at it one joke at a time that's mm -hmm. kind of what i'm trying to do and then eventually hopefully those jokes are all good and then they kind of come to you and uh you know make it seem like right, the thing right. to do charlie i wanted to talk about your videos too i mean between you uh miles with you betcha uh tyler dude dad uh pin holderness i mean you guys are flooding my social media feeds uh your content is all totally relatable uh you're speaking directly to guys like me you know 40 year old dudes uh in the midwest what have those collaborations done for you with guys like that? You know, it's so great uh, to collaborate with other people in doing kind of what you're doing for a few reasons. One, obviously, they have an audience. Mm -hmm. I have an audience. When you collaborate, you know, it you just feed into each other's audiences. Your audience get the ex cross pollination i guess uh yeah. or whatever you you get exposed to more fans fit more fans get exposed to you but that's just one aspect of it the bigger aspect is creatively um you know i'm i'm in wisconsin and <clears throat> there's not necessarily a ton of other people right in my neighborhood doing exactly what i'm doing so when i go to one of their places and they're doing exactly what i'm doing like yeah. we can just feed off each other creatively and we just have so much fun uh doing that and that we've all really become really solid buddies through that uh whole creative process just because we laugh i don't know in the process of making these videos we laugh very hard and that builds a friendship pretty quick you know yeah uh I mean, and to see the level that they've gotten to as well. I mean, you guys are all kind of on this, you know, trajectory. Uh, and you're all taking off where, you know, major brands are picking up on this. I mean, you just did a video with Target earlier this year with yeah. Matthew Stafford, uh, you know, off of a concept that you guys came up with, uh, with the Target husbands. Uh, it's just, it's, it's really, it's something to see it grow like it has with, 
with everybody who's involved. Uh, something like th this was one that kind of caught my attention. The the Yeti cooler video yeah. that you did. You know, where does a bit like that come from? And how long does it take to come together? Um the Yeti video, yeah, so that is a concept that's sort of a bucket of content called Guys Who Invented. I did with Dude Dad, yeah. Guys Who Invented I, um, Ikea. And so you kind of have, you roughly know that <clears throat> that's like a solid framework for a video. And then when you put in like the specific, uh, it starts with the observation of, I can't believe these are so expensive. <laughs> and then, you know, and that's so, a very relatable observation that many, mm -hmm. many people can um, relate to. So you know that roughly that video um, will have an audience. And from there, that's when the fun starts. It's just talking, you know, sitting in a room with Miles, um, riffing on that or get, jumping on the phone with him and going off on the various, you know, $50 bottle openers, <laughs> $60 dog bowls, that sort of stuff. And you can just have fun with all those, you know? Uh, how does that work with, you know, the companies? I mean, whether it's Stanley or if it's Yeti, like... Is there any sort of collaboration there? Like, do you reach out and you 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 say like, "Hey, heads up, Yeti, we're going to do this 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 bit," or do you guys just 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 rifle it off and you know whatever happens happens? Yeah, no, we we absolutely don't reach out because a lot of times they're not going <laughs> to. As soon as a company gets involved like that, they're going to want to take out a lot of the funny stuff, you know. And uh -huh. the only time that we um, work with brands is when they. Um, is when they are interested in like sort of that the creative aspect of it of it being into like of us having a similar creative vibe it being like a collaboration like i don't necessarily want to work with um a brand and then have like a bunch of rules about um, what you can't say, you know what right. I mean? So yeah. I, I feel like anytime we work with a brand, it's that, but if we're going into a brand, like with a bunch of jokes about it, cause it's almost two different things, you know, you don't want to, um, be sort of hamstrung from the truth because like some brands paying you, and then it, you'd rather just make a funny video. Cause if it's yeah. too unfunny, or if it's not true, it's too much of a promotion. Nobody's going to, that's a commercial then, you know? So I think you've really, you've, you've hit this, you know, sweet spot, if you will, with some of these brands, like especially the iconic Wisconsin brands, you know, the, the Culver's and the quick trips. And, you know, uh, when you go, like, I imagine you're highly sought after by all of these, these Wisconsin brands. I mean, at this point, is there any brand in Wisconsin you still want to work with? I mean, any, another one that you want to work with yet that you haven't? I'm I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is. I mean, um, I I don't necessarily go out of. Um, I don't often like think about it necessarily that way. I just like, of course, there's ice fishing um, brands. There's there's fishing brands binoculars uh things like that and like bird watching i like doing all this stuff the way a brand deal usually will work is i make a video about something that i like like i make a video about quick trip or a joke about quick trip and maybe um quick trip you know uh i i i forget exactly how that deal start but they're such a fun partner because yeah. i mean they have so much fun content themselves yeah. like if you watch their page and her team and they're so funny yeah. so like to, to it's almost like a collaboration in the same way like with do dad or those guys you know yeah. um and uh like fleet farm we've got we do stuff with fleet farm yeah. <laughs> but i was making fleet farm videos you know long before that so we really try to have these things come from an organic place yeah um and uh that's just what makes the best video because at the end of the day it is just about making the videos as as good as possible and mm -hmm. that's sort of the motor and if the motor is broken then the rest of the 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 ship's not going anywhere you know mm -hmm. um 
uh, the boat, let's be honest, <laughs> you know? Um, so, you know, I just try to make the videos as good as possible. And then there's, I'm so lucky that there are um, some brands that um, want to, you know, be on board with that, you know? Well, I mean, well, you've got the audience. I mean, you know, you know what the videos, you know what your audience likes. So like, I would imagine that if I'm a, if I'm corporate branding, you know, for if it's Superior Wisconsin or if it's, you know, Quick Trip or Lining Kugels or Fleet Farm or whoever, I mean, I would imagine that that conversation is a lot of them listening to you instead of them telling you what they want. I mean, you talk about those collaborations with these companies. Do you find that that's more often the case is that they're, that, that they want to, that they want to pick your mind and, and what you think the video should look like? Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, I'm all I'm pitching videos. They're they're not really saying we want a video about X, Y, or Z as much. It's it's more like a a, a brand or whatever that it's it's kind of like a prompt, you know, an improv, you know, like um it, like now we're our next scene is at a fleet farm our next scene is at a quick trip you know what i mean and mm -hmm. in a lot of ways these brands uh, and they they essentially become characters in the the sort of the world a little bit yeah. you know and they all it, you know it's not just something we don't um just work with uh any brand for whatever the deal it really has to fit essentially the the um the jokes we're already telling you know and and um and it, they because that that i don't know that just that's what makes it authentic um and there, there's not really a need to branch out beyond that um for for me personally is this still fun for you Oh yeah. Yeah, it is fun. I mean, don't get me wrong. There, there are, there are days where, um, it's tough, but every job is tough. And, um, and I, really, I, I am very grateful for this whole thing. I mean, I really am. I and mean, to be able to do this, it's, it's a dream, um, a, a crazy dream, you know, that, uh, that, is happening and i'm just i'm enjoying it and yes it is a lot of work it's always a lot of work but yeah. um life is a lot of work so it's all good well i know you've been on the road a lot recently and you've you've been you tour the entire country and you play corners of the country that uh you know aren't going to be nearly as familiar with charlie barons as the folks here in wisconsin i mean you're beloved here in the state you go to a place like you know arizona how is playing to that crowd different than playing you know Wisconsin Rapids. I mean, they're all a little different based on where they're from, but they're all really, they're a lot the same. You know, Rapids is obviously going to be a very, very Wisconsin, uh, central Wisconsin audience. Um, you go out to Phoenix, you're going to get uh, largely a Midwest audience mixed in with the southwest but the thing about people from the midwest is they travel so uh, a lot of my audiences are um you know have people from the midwest and a lot of them and it, that that's just because i think that speaks to the midwest that yeah people leave but people miss home and they want to come back and reconnect with people in the audience and uh you know connect with the show or whatever i honestly don't know how much of it is about me personally and about just creating an an area where people from the midwest can like come hang out kind of like a, a meetup of some sort or like a um like a, a packers bar in the middle of phoenix you know what i mean yeah you're coming to watch the packers but you're also coming to hang out with these people from a place that you know and love. Yeah. Well, I want to ask you a couple more things before I uh, let you go. I know you're you're busy today. Um, you did UW commencement uh, mm -hmm. not too long ago. Mm -hmm. That had to have been a trip, you know, uh, uh, to come back and, and to be the man that everybody's looking at, you know, on one of the biggest days of their life. Yeah. Yeah, 
that that was a trip that still is a trip um i think leading up to that i was so go 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 like with work stuff and i was working on that speech how long were you working on that speech was that something that i mean you 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 circled that on the calendar for a while and you thought that that was something you had to nail huh yeah, it's not something I just put together the, the day before, <laughs> you know. Uh, no, because, you know, it's a commencement speech. I mean, it's super exciting. It's a huge honor. That's a big responsibility. With That's a big audience. And that's a big room. And that's not an easy room for laughs necessarily because it's so wide open. So you really want to make it um, funny. You want to watch other commencement speeches to like see what kind of works and what could work for you and what doesn't work and all that. And also just figure out what you want to say. And it, it was a huge honor. But at the same time, I wasn't that far removed in my mind yeah. from them. Yeah. I mean, maybe 10, 15 years. Yeah. And uh, so it's also kind of scary, like, oh, maybe it is that much removed. You know, maybe I didn't graduate uh that short of a time yeah. ago you know but it was uh it, it was great and then it was so kind of intense leading up to it and then i do it and then you're kind of like did i just do that you know <laughs> <laughs> and um and it's a but real honor at the end of the day seriously when you look back on it now i mean you've had a lot of time to reflect on that are you how do you think about it like are you are you proud of how it did are there moments that you're like Oh man, like, like, I guess, I guess, what goes through your mind when you when you reflect on that moment? Yeah, very proud, very happy, um, just just grateful that it happened. Grateful, I feel like the jokes landed. You know, I think, um, of course, had I, of course, you'd always want to say, could I go back and and nail this joke a little bit better or that joke? But that's stand up. I mean, that's that's you know public speech that's why you're doing it live you know you, you're gonna have the screw-ups you're gonna have the the things that are imperfect in it you know and um that's part of that deal okay so once you get done with your uh, big slate of shows here you do your you know you, you do those last few shows uh and they think you have two shows in madison and then you might have one more uh, to wrap up this this uh was it the good old-fashioned tour uh, yeah this uh, this leg of it yeah yeah so what's next after you get done with this slate of shows what's next for charlie barons i'm gonna fish i'm gonna <laughs> uh i'm gonna go uh camp or something uh yeah, yeah what do you what do you do is is are those the it's two all things outside. that you do yeah yeah it's outside it's away from any uh computer or any of this 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 stuff is is all great but you know if you're on a phone too much you just feel that plaque build up in your brain there's only one real way to reset you know and that's just being outside in the thing that's real you know is that hard for you to do to disconnect no i love it i love it um it's not hard for me well i the difficult thing is um obviously the time i don't have this um addiction to phones as much as some um i i have a sort of a disdain for them i feel like they're they're separating us and keeping us away uh from each other and yet i make content on them so i understand the irony here uh, i wish there was enough that's why i like doing the live shows i like yeah. bringing people together but it is um a necessary thing to a degree to in order to do a live show yeah. uh, that's why comedian that's why so many comedians do anything online is so they can sell tickets and so it's a bit um maybe hypocritical of me to say but i really think that the thing i um love the most is just being like outside fishing hunting building something that kind of thing that that's sort of what i grew up doing biking all that so and that's what i love doing the most 